Okay, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Café Ole. My name is Jay. And here at Café Ole, we go over the everyday Hebrew you need here in Israel to succeed, whether that is reading and paying your utility bills, going grocery shopping and uh, reading nutritional labels, keeping up with the news, um, striking up a conversation, uh, job interviews, flirting, complaining, um, understanding Israel through its culture and society and maybe a little psychology, whatever it takes um, to communicate effectively, but as opposed to your native language in your country of origin here in Israel in modern Hebrew. As always, we want to hear from you what topics you'd like us to cover. If we haven't in the past or you'd like us to review, please be in touch with us at Hebrew, H-E-B-R-E-W, at nbn.org.il. If you're joining us live on Zoom, you can write that your questions, comments, concerns, requests for topics in the chat box in the Zoom uh, window. Otherwise, you can always email us at nefeshbenefesh with the email I just provided. Um, you can also see all our previous lessons up on YouTube along with the uh, spreadsheet vocabulary that goes with the class. There's quite a lot of lessons up there. Just go to youtube.com type in Cafe Ole or Nefesh Benefesh, you'll see a whole playlist of all of our previous lessons up there. Um, if you are registered to join us via Zoom, whether you can or cannot, you should be receiving an email with a recording of this class, of each week's class, along with the spreadsheet vocabulary that I um, both create and share with you live on Zoom. Um, if you are not, again, that magical email address, Hebrew at nbn.org.il. I see a lot of returning people, which is amazing each week. And I see people asking the same questions. I promise you, if you get in touch with our staff and my colleagues, who are also on the call with me live on Zoom, but by email, we will get in touch with you. Okay, with that, um, we actually just one more bit of housekeeping. Um, uh, next week we are is our last class for this spring session. We're going to take a few weeks off and rejoin together for the summer starting July 17th. Okay, so after next week, we're going to take a few weeks break. You can catch up on all of the previous lessons up on YouTube if you'd like and get ready for our summer classes. And again, please let us know what you'd like us to cover. Today we're going to cover um, an important piece of Israeli history, Israeli culture, um, and one of my favorite things to do, and I know it's one of yours, is to understand Israel and Israeli identity through music. We're going to do that with a very important, also sad uh, anniversary that would have been tomorrow. So tomorrow would have been um, the 69th birthday of Ilan Ramon. Ilan Ramon, many of you know, was not only a celebrated Israeli um, pilot in the Air Force, he was also the first Israeli in um, outer space who flew on the Columbia um, shuttle mission in 2003. This is also the 20th anniversary of the um, unfortunate disaster of the Columbia shuttle, which upon re-entry into Earth, we know what happened, um, it broke apart and everyone perished on it. Um, why are we talking about it? Because it connects us to a couple really important parts of Israeli culture, not just because that was a tremendous achievement, right? The first Israeli in outer space. It connects us to the Israeli 20 shekel bill and one of Israel's most popular, for decades, most popular pop song often requested, which is both beautiful and very sad. Um, how does this all connect? Well, those of you who have a wallet nearby and happen to have a 20 shekel bill, if you pull it out, you'll see this, right? 20 shekel bills, just like all um, bills in Israel are, um, were, there's a new series of them that started in 2017, and they all have the pictures and quotes from some of Israel's most um, important poets, right? Modern Hebrew, first off, Hebrew throughout time has always been identified with um, oh, see some people are having some volume issues. Sorry, just one second. Let me just make sure. Hopefully you can all hear me now. Great, okay, not sure where people had a problem hearing, but I'm just gonna start again very quickly. 
just one minute. Okay, so again, 20 shekel bill, right? 20 shekel bill, like all bills in Israel, 20, 50, 100, and 200 went under a new series in 2017, and they were all, um, they were all um, dedicated to classic poets in modern Hebrew. He, poetry has been an integral part of the Hebrew language since ancient times, whether it's the Tanakh, outside uh, poetry and continue to this day in modern Hebrew is no less different. On the 20 shekel bill is a very famous woman as all the poets are on the list. Name is Rachel HaMishoreret, Rachel or Rachel, the poetess. She has a whole name. Her name is Rachel Blufstein. Um, and the story goes that Rachel was um, living on a kibbutz in the north of Israel. This is the early 20th century. Um, and the uh, she was not just an acclaimed writer in modern Hebrew. She originally was from um, Imperial Russia, made Aliyah, moved to one of the original kibbutzim around the Kinneret, the Sea of Galilee. She was not just a talented writer and a poet writer specifically. She was also very good at her job in agriculture. She was sent to France uh, to study agriculture in the Sorbonne, um, and there she met her love of her life. Um, and they had a very um, strong love affair up until the uh, onset of the First World War. First World War happens, they both flee so that he doesn't get conscripted and they don't get caught up in the war, and they flee back to her father's house in Russia, where they live for a few days, for a, a while, excuse me, a couple of years. She returns to Israel, to the kibbutz. He does not, and they never see each other again. Um, and she uh, continues to live in Israel, thinking very fondly of her lost love, uh, unrequited love. Um, she continues to write a lot. She ends up unfortunately becoming sick with tuberculosis. She's hospitalized in Sfat and then moves to Tel Aviv where she lives out the rest of her days writing. She passes away in Tel Aviv and is buried um, by the Kinneret. And the Kinneret plays such an important part in who she is that when you look at the 20 shekel bill, you not only see her name, and in very small letters, you see who it's named after. Right in the corner here, it gives her name and her birth and death. death. But on the back, just like with all the bills, it has a quote from one of her, um, from one of all their famous poems. In this case, it says, "Hoi kineret sheli he hayit o chalamti chalom." And this is from her uh, very famous poem, Kineret. And it says, Hoi Kineret Shili, O my Kineret, O my Sea of Galilee. He Hayit, did you really exist? Were you really there? O Chalamti Chalom, or did I dream a dream? Right? This is a beautiful song that happens to be played a lot on Yom Azikaron. I'm happy to send you the link if you'd like to it. Um, there's one specific uh, composition that's shared, uh, played a lot during sad occasions by Chaim Moshe. But we're going to talk about another. Um, Rachel's song, probably her most famous song, and a very specific composition of it, and that happened to be, and still is to this day, the first Hebrew song ever broadcast into outer space. I'm going to show you that actual broadcast right now, and we're going to dig a little deeper into it. Um, you're going to hear some really American-inflected Hebrew from someone who is not a Hebrew speaker, so that's... Unpleasant to your ears, bear with it, because this is still a pretty monumentous occasion. You're going to hear the first Hebrew song broadcast into space. You're going to hear Mission Control in Houston announcing it, and you're going to hear Ilan Ramon's voice um, replying to it. So let me just play that for you. It's just a small clip.
Columbia, Houston, a very good morning to the Red Team. We're looking forward to another productive day with you. Uh, the music was for Elan. That was Hatishma Koli by Hakalonet Gavohim. Good morning, uh, Houston. It's great uh, to be awake uh, for a Hebrew, very old song by a very good uh, singer. And it's great to be here in space and uh, here, Hebrew. And thanks uh, for uh, my wife, Rona, and the kids. And uh, we are looking for a great fourth uh, science uh, day for us here. Okay, so what did we just hear? We heard, like I said, the first Israeli song, first Hebrew language song ever broadcast into outer space. The tradition is that if you're up on the um, space shuttle, there is no sunrise and sunset, and therefore you don't have a circadian rhythm to wake up when the sun comes up, and so you need to be manually woken up by Mission Control in Houston. So what you're hearing is a tradition that every day um, significant other spouses, family of the astronauts pick a song, a wake up song um, for, for, their, for the whole crew, but it's you know, dedicated to their specific um, loved ones. So what you're hearing is the song that Ilan Ramon's wife, Rona, um, chose for him to wake up to. And you hear how glad he is to hear this song in such a great song um, and thanking his wife and his kids. It's a very... Um, we're going to get into the song in just a second, but just a little bit into that, um, you'll understand the connection between the two, not just because it's that same woman, Rachel, who wrote the words to the song we're going to translate together. Um, this song, the, the composition you heard, is quite famous. It was by a pop group, pop rock group in the uh, 1960s. It, they only produced one album. It was a... Um, uh, what's the word for it? It was three different artists that were very popular in their own writing, came together and wrote uh, and made this one album that became a huge pop standard in Israeli culture. Everyone knows this album. The name of the group is Achalonot HaGvohim. You can hear Mission Control in Houston really butchering that Hebrew, but Achalonot HaGvohim, the tall windows. And it was comprised of three people, Shmuley Klaus, who wrote the composition that you uh, heard a little bit of, and we're gonna hear the full song in a little bit. Arik Einstein, a very, very popular Israeli musician already on his own. You can hear his voice. It's a very distinctive voice in Israeli music. And the third woman is Josie Katz. Josie Katz was a famous, um, popular musician and dancer already. And also very important for our audience here, Josie Katz was an Ola and still is an Ola. She um, made Aliyah from the great city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the age of 19. She became very popular in Israel and around the world with her songs. She's still alive. Um, thank God she is, uh, she is um, as of several years ago, announced that she was battling cancer, but she is still alive. And this album became a big deal in the 1960s. It's still her to this day. And specifically, the song we're about to translate together. The song that we're about to translate together in Hebrew, the official name of it is Zemel Nuge. Yeah, it's a word you're never going to hear ever again in life. Nuget means basically sad. Um, but it's normally known, just like they said on the uh, control, uh, by its um, by its first two name, first two words, Hatishma Koli. And that's what you heard in it. So what we're going to do together, just like we've done in the past, we're going to translate this together. And I'm going to go slow to give you the opportunity at home to bring up what vocabulary you already have. We're going to translate this slowly together, me over here and you um, following along. And then we're going to listen to the song together. It's a very short song. But to put it all together, a very famous poet in modern Hebrew poetry, a very famous song, a very famous moment in Israeli history, and still very sad. So this song, Zemel Nuge, is about that love affair I told you about. Rachel is um, far away from her uh, lover, who she met in Paris and followed her back to Russia, and now has never seen them again. Okay? Um, and this song is a song of unrequited love, a, a love letter back to him from back in Israel. So we're going to translate this together. Hatishma Koli, I'm going to read the first uh, stanza and then we're going to translate. Hatishma Koli Rechoki Sheli, 
התשמע קולי באשר הנחה, קול קורא בעוז, קול בוכה בדמי, ומעל לזמן מצווה ברכה. אוקיי, ביג רד פלאגס אבריוור פולקס, דיס איז פואטיק מודרן היברו, אוקיי? A lot of the rules that you're going to ask me about don't apply here. It's poetic Hebrew, just like poetic English, poetic French, and any other language. Rules are played with to convey emotion. Okay? So, yes, it's important to know grammar rules in modern Hebrew. Yes, it's also important to know that poetry and song and using language to convey emotion is no less important. And if the words don't fit into what you learned, It's okay, okay? But we're gonna start here at the top. We're gonna translate this together because again, this song is from, this was written in the 1920s. This song was performed in the 1960s. It's performed multiple variations throughout time. Okay, let me pull this up. I'm seeing that there are big black boxes covering much of the Hebrew on it. Um, let me just reshare this again, folks. Make sure that is not the case. Can you all see the highlighted parts, rows two through five? That's all you need to pay attention to right now, two through five. Can you see that? No, okay, let me try to fix something on my side here. Okay, just one second, folks. We're gonna try this again. All right. Okay, now can you see rows two through five, no black boxes? Okay, Yuval, if you can hear me on the call, please um, let me know what's going on here and if you can help out somehow. Black box on transliteration. Okay, folks, let me try this again. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. Stop sharing. Let's try this once more and see if we can get this to work. Okay, how's this? All you need to see are the first four lines at the top. Can you see that? Not the last one, folks. Again, rows two through five. I really need your help. There's 170 people on the call. Please let me know. Can you see that? It happens when you move the mouse. Okay, I'm not gonna move the mouse. I'm gonna stick over here on the left-hand side. Okay. Okay, people are still having problems. Let me see what I can do here. Okay, thank you so much for letting me know. I see there's a black issue. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I'm trying to close everything out. Try it one more time. Okay, is that working? Black box is still appealing. Don't move the mouse once it comes up. Don't move mouse. Okay, we're gonna do what we can, folks. If you can't see things, I promise you're gonna get the spreadsheet as a PDF. You're gonna be able to follow along on your own. I gotta, I gotta push through this class, technology issues notwithstanding. Okay. I'm not moving the mouse. Hatishma koli rechoki sheli. Okay, hatishma koli rechoki sheli. 
Atishma koli means, will you hear my voice? The ha at the beginning of the word doesn't mean ha like we normally think of it, right? Ha in this case is short for ha'im, okay? Um, and ha'im we know as a question word means can you, would you, will you? It's a question word we use when we don't use normal uh, um, question words, right? In this case, starting a question. Those of you who, for example, know um, Bazooka Joe comics, you know that it says Hayadat or Hayadata, did you know, right? It's fancy Hebrew, it's formal Hebrew, we're not gonna use this all the time. Hatishma Koli, will you hear my voice? Rechoki Sheli, Rechok means far away, but it's Rechoki, my far away one. Right, the far away one, Shali. It's emphasized that this person who who you want to um, listen to your voice is far away. My far away one. Okay. Sorry, just a second, trying to get some tech help as we're doing this. Okay, Hatishma Koli Be'asher Hincha. Hatishma Koli, will you hear my voice? Be'asher Hincha. Be'asher Hincha is a fancy way. Simply be'asher, where or which, hincha. Hincha is, again, very formal Hebrew, here you are or where you are, right? It comes from the word hine, here. Hineni, many of you know that word, hineni, here I am. Hincha, here you are. But in this case, it's translated to, will you hear my voice wherever you are? Kol kore beoz. Kol kore beoz. Kol boche bidmi. Kol kore beoz. A voice. Kol kore is a voice. Beoz. Oz is strength. Or a voice of strength. Or a voice uh, announcing in strength. Voice of strength. Kol boche bidmi, voice boche. Kol is voice, boche, crying, bidmi, badam sheli, in my blood. A voice crying in my blood. Ume al azman mitzavebracha, and throughout time, ume al lazman, above all time and above all else, mitzavebracha, sending a blessing. Everlasting, sending a blessing. Okay, so will you hear my voice? It's a voice of strength, a voice crying in my blood, sending a blessing to you from so far away, my far one. Okay, move down to the next uh, stanza. I'm gonna try to share again, folks. I apologize for this technical issue. We're trying to get it solved at the same time. Okay. Try one other way to do this. Just move that up there. Okay, hopefully that fixed it a little bit, folks, that it's zoom bars at the top of the screen. All right, do you know that your screen is? Okay, we're gonna go to the next stanza. Tevel zoraba udrachim barav. 
אוקיי? תבל זו רבה ודרכים בה רב. תבל, nature, land, it also can be synonymous with earth, so the, the, or the world. The world is רבה, רבה, great, large. ודרכים בה רב, and דרכים, ways, or paths, right, from the word דרך, בה, in it, רב. We use that same word again, and the paths within it. are many. נפגשות לדק, נפרדות לעד. Okay, נפגשות לדק, um, those pathways, right? Meet for just a moment, right? Meeting for a moment. Nifredot la'ad. Nifrad, to separate or to, to fall apart. Um, separating la'ad, forever. Mevakesh adam ach koshlot ragav, raglav. Mevakesh adam, a man asks. Ach koshlot raglav. Ach is but. Raglav, his legs, koshlot, fail him, right? His legs, but his legs fail him. But his legs fail him. Lo yucha limtso et asher avad. Lo yucha limtso et asher avad. The same man who asks, but his legs fail him, will not lo yuchal limtso find et asher avad, that which is lost. Fine. He will not find what is et asher avad, what is already lost. Okay, last stanza, and then we're going to listen to the song. אחרון ימי כבר קרוב אולי, right? אחרון ימי, the last of my days. אחרון, last, ימי, my days. ימים שלי, ימי. אחרון ימי, the last of my days. כבר קרוב אולי, or already כבר קרוב close אולי, perhaps, maybe, or close, or already likely close. כבר קרוב היום של דמעות פרידה, כבר קרוב, or those, those same words again, already coming soon, היום, the day of דמעות פרידה. דמעות פרידה is הדמעות של פרידה. דמעה is a tear, דמעות tears, and this is, we've talked about this before, these two words here create a compound word, a smichut, in which case the first word often has to change its um, vowelization. So instead of dmaot, it's dimot preda, preda separation. So the day soon approaches, kvakarov hayom, already the, the day approaches of tears of um, pleida, again, separation, longing, um, being a t taken apart of separation, tears of separation. separation. Okay. I will wait for you. I will wait for you until my life is to extinguish. I will wait for you until my life is over. 
כחכות רחל לדודה. Beautiful line. First off, her name is Rachel. And second, she's referring to the biblical story of Rachel, who had to wait all those years before um, uh, her beloved Yaakov could marry her. Remember the, remembering the story from Breshit, right? As Rachel awaited Le Doda, her beloved, right? Doda, her beloved, her beloved. Okay. Okay, so what's happening here, let me just, sorry, let me just do one more thing here. Okay, so again, this song is about unrequited love from her, um, unrequited love of this man that he, she met in uh, France, moved to Russia with, and never saw again. And the song is, again, most known for its first line, Hatishma koli rechoki shali. Will you hear my voice, my faraway one? Right? And that's the idea of why Rona, uh, Rona Ramon, Ilan's wife, dedicated this song to him as their wake up call. Like, will you literally, will you hear my voice, my faraway one? Out in space, will you hear my voice? Um, obviously it has, it's not just a tragic song in and of itself. It becomes even more tragic as um, Ilan doesn't come back from uh, space. Uh, Rona herself um, dies of cancer many years later. Um, one of their sons who also joins in the, um, Air Force, just like his father, was killed in a training accident. Um, this song was played nonstop in 2003 afterwards because it had that moment of not just being um, the first Hebrew song ever broadcast into outer space, but because it had this connection with um, uh, being the wake-up call, the story of Rachel and the background to it. It's a beautiful song. It's a tragic song. Okay, so we're gonna listen to the song in full. It's a very short song and then take your questions. Thank you again very much for your patience and support with our technological issues. We're gonna to try to get it solved, but regardless, you will get a copy of the spreadsheet without any black boxes on it. I promise it'll be a regular PDF sheet, no worries there. Okay, let me. Nope, that's not the right song. Sorry, just a second, folks. Sorry. Not sure what's going on here. Wrong song. Thanks, YouTube. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, I'm gonna play this song in the background and I'm gonna have the lyrics up so you can follow along with the lyrics. Hopefully the issue is taken care of. All right, just one second. And we'll try to highlight each line as it's sung by the group. Ma poli, 
Beautiful song. You've probably heard that song in some capacity before. It consistently charts as one of Israel's most popular, most beloved songs in the, you know, countdown of Israel's biggest hits of all time. It's usually in the top 10, top 20. Beautiful song, incredibly tragic and sad song on its own, but certainly in connection to Ilan Ramon. Um, so very important, I think, when learning a language and moving to a new country, you need to understand the culture in which you're now living, which is going to be completely different, or at least fundamentally different from where you're coming from. And these small nuances you may not get. So now you know, have one of many Israeli popular songs in your repertoire that we've gone through several before. Now you have another. I'm going to stop here and go through some Q&A about the specific class. Again, thank you for your patience. We're going to work out the kinks for the next time, and you will get a PDF, no black boxes on it, so you can follow along with the, the language. Um, but this is your chance, if you have a question about this specific class, to please write it in the Q&A box if you're joining us live on Zoom. Can I play it again? Absolutely, I can play it again. Let's do that one more time. So let me pull up both the words and the lyrics. Okay, let me just get...
Um, okay, let's get to some questions. Do Israelis actually call someone Rechoki or is it just poetic? It's just poetic. Um, you could say Rechoki Sheli. That would actually be very sweet. Um, my, my distant one, if, right? If you have someone visiting from abroad, visiting or traveling abroad, or you're abroad and you're referring to someone um, with affection, you could call them Rechoki Sheli. And it would be, um, it would actually be even better if you trans if you said the first line right do you hear me my distant one um but you wouldn't just call someone it's 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 very poetic um no other israeli astronauts that i know of have been to space yet remember that the um american space shuttle program has basically been discontinued with a few exceptions so i don't think there was but you can correct me if i'm wrong that's not my Strong soup, a great question. Phil asked a great question. Is it Eretz Zo Raba or Tevel Zo Raba? What we're looking at in the um, words is the original poem by Rachel Meshoreret. The subsequent musical compositions changed a few words here and there. So for example, Tevel, which is a very old fashioned word for Eretz was substituted for Eretz. There's a few other words like that as well. Um, but otherwise, that's the original lyrics. Again, people taking um, poetic license on top of a poem. But yes, it's Eretz Zoraba is what they're singing. In the original poem, it's Tevel Zoraba. Okay. Um, who sings it again? The name of the group is Echalonot Hagvohim. We'll send you the URL of the link to listen to the song. The, the tall windows or the high windows, it's often translated into English. Um, they did not sing in English. They only produced one album. It's got lots of hits on it. You And they performed around the world. There's a clip on YouTube of them performing in Paris, for example. They're lip syncing because um, it's the version that we just heard, the recorded version um, superimposed over them performing live. Um, they did tour around the world. It was a very popular um, a trio of the three of them. They subsequently broke up after this one album came on um, and they went all their success uh, respective ways in the music industry in Israel. Um, a great question here. Is poetic Hebrew common in modern songs or more of an old fashioned thing like poetic contractions and faux archaisms in English poetry? Great question. So as we've talked about a lot, um, when we talk about Israeli popular culture. We talk about how do you forge identity in the modern sense and in the modern life and being in modern existence, but also what comprises Israeli identity. And when Israeli identity comprises a lot of the Middle East and our part of the Middle East and specifically our tradition as Jews, you have modern pop culture, what some people would just write off as secular which I think is incredibly um, unfair. That's a nice way to call it. When you have the end of this poem where it says, she's not just referring to herself, folks, when she says, as Rachel waits for her beloved. She's not just referring to herself, she's referring to Rachel in the Tanakh. So the use of poetry harkens back to an older time because remember a lot of Tanakh, a lot of the Bible is written in a classic poetic style that we know from this part of the Middle East, not just from um, Israelite and Hebrew and Jewish cultures, also from other Canaanite culture, that two line stance that basically parallel to one another. That's a very common thing in Tanakh, and it's a common thing you'll hear also in modern Hebrew, in classical Hebrew poetry, um, they use the same meter. So using poetic license is no different um, in modern Hebrew as it is in medieval or ancient Hebrew. Um, sometimes it's not gonna translate exactly the same way, just like in English and in other languages. Some songs don't translate literally and Google Translate and your own desire to understand 
aren't going to work, you need to be a little bit more creative with how you translate words. For example, some of these lines, um, let me pull up the, uh, right? Mivakesh adam ach koshlot raglav. This line makes sense in ancient and medieval Hebrew. It doesn't necessarily make sense in modern Hebrew. Why? Because in modern Hebrew, we follow the Indo-European way of creating a uh, sentence, subject, verb, object. In biblical Hebrew, it's verb, subject, object, right? So in both of these, um, in these two phrases, in this one line, the verb is coming first and then the subject. That is classic classical Hebrew, biblical and medieval. Mivakesh adam ach koshlot raglav. In modern Hebrew, if we were saying this is just a flat, non-poetic line, adam mivakesh ach raglav koshlot. That could also be poetry. It's very um, emotive, it's very descriptive, but the word order is harkens back to an older Hebrew. When you get into poetic Hebrew, when we've talked about this before, when we talked about Eurovision entries, remember this, and a few other songs in the past, word order gets played around with, not just because Hebrew has a precedent for it, but that's just poetic license as well. Okay, let me see if any last questions in the Q&A here. Great question, thank you for that one. Okay, I don't remember who's on all the bills. You can look it up. Um, I don't usually walk around in cash. Israel's becoming quickly a cash-free society. Um, I just happen to have a 20 shekel bill on hand. Um, but they're all named after poets. So I believe Nathan Alterman is on the 50 or the 200. Leah Goldberg is on the 100. These are all famous modern Hebrew poets. Okay. Um, with that, we're going to break early this week. Thank you all so much for joining us. Again, if you have requests for topics, we have one last class next week. Otherwise, we're going to take a break after next week's class and rejoin together in the middle of July, July 17th. But again, if you are not receiving our emails with the spreadsheets, please check your spam also. It could easily just be ending up there. But please email us, H-E-B-R-E-W at nbn.org.il. If you forgot that, this video will be up in a few days on YouTube. It will have a link to register there, as well as you'll get to hear my voice multiple times saying that same email address. Todagaba, thank you all so much, and I will see you all next week, Black Box Free on Zoom here. Peace